seem like everybody watch the house of consciousness God, I'm tuning in here in the States to every continent oh, wow. You got your holy book, your references and documents Then hit your brother's side and get it cracking if you're confident Sign of the TV, it don't get no more reality nah. It's helping us stay mindful of the struggle in totality Humble yourself and let the commentary resonate Living in these times, this here is sure to help you yeah, yeah, in a new zone Hope the dialogue ain't too strong Y'all know that we've been waiting too long And ever since I stepped into this paradigm Most the time, all I got is building on the TV mind is a black throne Where kings and queens come get their facts on Just be prepared to have your mind blown And ever since I stepped into this paradigm Most the time, all I got is freedom on my mind For real Can you dig it? Can you dig it? <laughs> Some Black Power family you already know what it is. This is your brother Sartnetta, and I'm sitting here with the OG. You already know who he is, man. OG Hollywood. Peace and Black Power to you, my brother. How you been? I'm good, my brother. I'm good. How you feeling, man? All right, I'm good, man. Um, let's get right into it. I would like to know more about yourself. Like, like you know, tell the people about your upbringing. How was your upbringing like in the Bronx? Mm. My upbringing in the Bronx was. Crazy. I did everything a nigga was doing in the streets, you know, but um, I was fortunate enough to not only be brought up in the Bronx, you know, so I was um, on some back and forth shit, you know, I had divorced parents, so my father was in South Carolina, my mother was in the Bronx, so um, I came back, I left the Bronx at eight years old and came back at 14, so by that time, you know, I was, um, I was ready to play. I was ready to play by that time. You know, it was the late 80s, so you know what was going on in the streets back then. I mm -hmm. got back here, 14 years old, just been in SC for six years, couldn't do nothing. Daddy strict as hell. Come up here, mom's got to work all day. Everybody outside got a pocket full of money and crap. Mm -hmm. I would say I learned how to get to a dollar early, you know, so at a young age, I was focused on getting money. When I told you I first came back here at 14, I was right here on 125th Street in front of Mark 125. Mm -hmm. My uncle Abdul Rahim, he, he been going to that mass jet on 116th Street like the last 40, 50 years. You know, um, he had me out there with the bootleg cassette tapes back then, as soon as I came back. That's my mom's older brother, you know what I mean? And he had just came home or whatever because he was staying at my mother's house in the Bronx. My mother's had an apartment in River Park Towers at that time. And he would be in the house all all day long, dubbing tapes, dubbing tapes, dubbing tapes. We would come out here with duffel bags with hundreds and hundreds of tapes, like big ass table right in front of in front of Mart on 125th, and just be out there mopping them on the weekends. Like that, that's that's what I was. I was focused on getting some bread, like at a young age. Like you know, when I was down south, I was 11 years old, man. And I, I told my pops I need some school clothes. That nigga took me to the backyard. I said, "That's the lawnmower. That's the gas can." Take your ass up and down this motherfucker's street and knock on everybody's door till somebody let you cut their grab for $20. Mm -hmm. And then you come out do it again tomorrow and again tomorrow till you got enough money to get some school clothes. And that's how, what my upbringing was like. Ain't nobody give me shit. I took it. I hustled for it. I, I, I did whatever I had to do. Like that, that's, that's how I came up. Like On my own, real young. Mm -hmm. You know? Like that. How did this thing start with like Sex Money Murder? Are you a member of Sex Money Murder? I mean, I was an original member of it when it started. You know, um, that actual faction of sex, money, murder has been dismembered by the federal government. So, you know, it, it doesn't really exist anymore. This new entity that is known as sex, money, murder is, you know, is, it's what sex, money, murder is today, you know, but I wasn't an original member of no new stuff. You talking about something that went on when I was a teen. You mm -hmm. understand what I'm saying? 92. 
Right. That's when, when we picked up that name, 1992. I was 18 going on 19 years old. People that don't know about it, like let's say the people that's in different cities, they would think that this is some type of new stuff that's going on and make it look like the brothers is out here still wild and still doing this stuff, still beating up the people. A lot of people don't know that this was like damn near in the 80s and, and you know, the 90s and shit. But like, like I said, majority of those people, some of them are still in prison and fighting for their freedom. And like, they don't need their name associated with no negative shit and all this crime and 15 year old girls getting beat up. These dudes been in prison for 25 years, 20 years. They don't got nothing to do with that. You know what I mean? Then you got others who've done considerable amounts of time in prison and are home now and stand clear from all the bullshit. And, and not just staying clear from the bullshit, but trying to lead the way and be positive examples in the community. And, um, and you know, try to pull brothers away from making the same mistakes that we made. You know, that's what the majority of us who are here from that era are, are doing. Like, the only ones who are still doing corrupt shit, I'm going to be 100% honest with you. The only ones who are still doing corrupt shit are the ones who told, came home from prison early and back in there for rape. Two of them. They, they know who they are. Everybody in the hood knows who they are. Two of the main ones are told to get out early, you know, because that show their integrity and their honor was. You know, so that's, that's who the government want to mess with. They want to let them out and they come home and rape women. Yeah. So, um, what is life like for you now? Like, what are you doing now in these streets? Well, I was in the streets, man. I'm doing work in the streets. I'm not moving work in the streets. Man. I'm right. doing work Clear in the that. streets. You know what I'm saying? It's mm -hmm. a big difference, man. You know, I'm trying to get niggas off the streets, man. You know, I, I work, man. I work three jobs, man. One of the things we do, we got a security company, man. I try to pull young dudes I know who's like in the streets while I'm doing shit. Come over here and do this, man. Exert some of that energy over here. Come to the club with me, man. Let's get away from that. You know what I mean? But um, it, it, it's, it's a, quite a few things I'm doing with, with, with a couple of young kids around the way, man. Just trying to get them away from that, man. And, and what I'm doing now, just talking more, man, being more vocal with, with the whole little YouTube thing or whatever, man. I was doing what I was doing in the shell for a long time, man. And people started telling me I should talk more to to, to be heard about more than just the people in the room. Um, I don't know the whole story, but, you know, listening to these crazy people online, they trying to make it look like he killed his own partner, he killed his own man for snitching on him. What was that? Like? What, what, what was it like growing up with a brother like that? Oh my goodness, man. I'm gonna tell you like this right here, man. Really knowing that dude and knowing like the public persona of him, bro, it is fucked up. You know what I'm saying? Like, because I used to spend a lot of time in, in, in the house with this dude sitting there playing uh, Bulls versus Blazers for hours or from Celtics versus Lakers all the way up to Bulls versus Blazers. If you know the old Sega, that's death and years. You understand what I'm saying? But, um, laughing all the time, joking, funny, always want to make sure his, his, his friends are good. You feel what I'm saying? Like, if, if you outside and if he going to get something to eat, he's going to ask you if you got money, if you hungry. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody's just not going to do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's not going to eat in front of you if you don't, you know what I mean? Like, he just was like that from, from young, man. He just had a good heart. And... It's fucked up, man, having that good heart, that big heart kind of got him in that situation, you know? But um, he was not this monstrous person, man. Like, I know him like, we used to sit here and laugh and joke and be silly. You know what I mean? I was close enough with him to be silly with him. You know what I mean? So, like, my, my relationship with him is different than, you know, like, the people who met him in jail. You know what I mean? Like, a lot of people who befriended him in jail and. Uh, became sex money murder in jail on the peak. They met him in, in kill mode. He's, he's in jail. You know what I'm saying? He's in survival mode, rather. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, come on, this is you talking about a dude who's on Rikers Island with a Rolex on, man. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he's not, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, moving like he would around his loved ones when he's home and relaxed. Rikers Island with a Rolex on? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, so, you know, it's a different mentality. You know what I'm saying? It's a different mentality. Yeah, like he was, he was an animal in there. Like I, I know him like as, as a brother, like you feel what I'm saying? Like your mom kicked you out of getting sleep on the couch. Like, you know what I mean? Like that's that's what I have with him, you know? The individual, uh, the YouTube character, mm -hmm. talked about how he met Pistol Pete in jail and backed him down. First of all, this is another 
common misconception, right? I was talking in the hood today with a, with a couple of the young brothers, and they was talking about, you know, like, you know, uh, my man Vic was telling me, like, you know, back in the day, was like, you know, Hollywood would want like, to fuck you up, with Pete would have shot you. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that, that's the misconception. Pete will fuck you up. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Pete is not no sucker with the hands, like, not no, like, don't think he's one type of nigga, if he don't got a pistol, then, you know, he's, he's a sucker, like, hide behind, a, hide a, you know, some, some dudes hide behind their gun, right. and without the gun, they're they not really like that. Well, that's not Peter Rola. Without no gun, he gonna get busy. He gonna get busy, so it's like, I don't buy that, bro, I don't buy, it. if you would've said y'all fought, you know what I'm saying, if you would've said you got yours, he got his, whatever, like, that, cool, that might've happened, you, you feel what I'm saying? But to say you back him down, it's like, come on, now, now I'm not even entertained anymore because I know the character. Like, you, like, it, it, it's too much that didn't back him down. You feel what I'm saying? Right. For, for you to have back him down with a razor blade, nigga, you be to look deaf in the eyes, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that shit ain't nothing. A razor blade, bro, the nigga's not gonna back down from a razor blade. Bro. Have you ever met the other Pistol Pete? He said, I was watching a video about him. He said, Spanish kid, mm -hmm. I think he's Puerto Rican. Mm -hmm. And he said he chose that he met he met Pistol Pete when he went to prison. Mm -hmm. And he said he chose that name because of Pistol Pete. And he took on that name. Well, and I, I, this dude is a real soldier. Okay, that's that's good money. I didn't know that he said he chose that name because I of think, Pete. I, think he I said thought he that said he had that name. Uh, I thought he said he was older than Pete and he had that name before Pete. Oh, okay. If I'm not mistaken, okay. I think I've seen some of him. I think he said he's older than Pete and he had that name before Pete. And if he's from Watson or something like that, we did. We, I mean, we, we knew that name back in the days, though. We knew that there was a Spanish pistol, Pete, oh, okay. in the streets from when, when, we, when we were young. Yeah, when we were like 15, 15 16. I mean, like, no, no, kudos to him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Man, shout out Spanish pistol, Pete. I don't got no, no beef with him, bro. You feel what I'm saying? My, my thing is like, my whole thing is, I never placed everything on what you do in jail. See, I think a lot of people put a lot of emphasis on, on jail, man. When my, my thing with jail always been to get the fuck out. You know what I'm saying? Like, ah, uh, yeah, I mean, we can sit and talk about it. Like, I go to jail, cut 10 people, nigga, but I'm trying to go home, man. I'm so, trying to get so the money. So talk to us about that, um, about Pistol Pete, the charges that people are bringing up on him, saying that he's, he killed his own man. What happened with that situation? Man. You know, there's there's a lot of public information on that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And there's a lot of alleged stuff on that. But what didn't happen was he did not sit in jail and make up a rumor that Twin was snitching to get Twin knocked off because he was jealous of Twin or whatever the case may be. Or he was hating on Twin. Or he wanted Twin in there with him. That that That's not what happened in that situation. And like I said, um, somebody owed Twin a lot of money. And the person that owed Twin a lot of money started a rumor that Twin was the police. You know what I mean? Like I said, we know the Twin's not the police, but that rumor at that time, man. But see, this is, this, you wanna know who really started the rumor first? Right, check this out, man, right? This is me like just getting inside Pete's head from behind the wall, because I know a lot of pieces to the puzzle, right? The first person to ever tell Pete the Twin was a snitch was, guess who? The police. The police in 1993 when they were investigating him for the Harlem Week murder, driving the blue golf. They used to pull the golf over, take the seats out of the car, pat them down, all that, take them to the 43rd, take Pete in one room, take Twin in another, tell Twin Pete snitching, and tell Pete Twin snitching. You feel what I'm saying? Neither one of them was snitching. You feel what I'm saying? But trying to break them like that. You feel what I'm saying? And then they had an incident where they got caught down in NC with a, a, a large quantity of narcotics in a van, and they were released. Let, just let go. You feel what I'm saying? So you had those type of incidents happening. And then once this guy starts spreading the rumor that twin twin the one snitching on you, you don't think you sit back and like everything starts playing in your head? You feel what I'm saying? Even though, like we know, twin wasn't snitching. But that shit would, would paint a hell of a picture, bro. You understand what I'm saying? It's like if I'm sitting, if me and you was riding like riding, you feel what I'm saying? And I'm sitting there looking at this, that, and the third, and, and you still out on the streets going hard to paint. You feel what I'm saying? It's like, and then I got this guy telling me, man, that's who's telling on you. Who wouldn't believe that? Like, you feel what I'm saying? It's kind of, but, but like I said, it, I, I, I still don't say that 
based upon that, he ordered the hit. You feel what I'm saying? I, that's not for me to say because I didn't see the letter. It didn't come to my address, so I would have went to jail. You know what I mean? I don't know. It's like once you start going about what, what, what the police say, man, against your friends, then that's that's not me. You know what I'm saying? Peter ain't tell me he did it yet. You feel what I'm saying? He ain't tell me he did it yet, bro. So I ain't going against my friend based on what the police said he did. I'm sorry, man. Damn, so what was the ultimate, what was the um, the whole time that they hit people? Just life? It was 105 plus life. 105? Yeah. Plus life. Mm. How old would he be right now? Like He's 45. He'll be 46 in September, no, October the 3rd, I believe. I think October 3rd, he'll be 46. I was watching your video the other day, and you talked about um, 50 Cent. Mm. And you said that 50 Cent was doing a uh, they, 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 no, it's like a series, like a series, or yeah. I, don't, I don't know, like yeah, I, don't, I don't know what whether it's good. I, I know they said he was doing BMF, and then he's supposed first. I seen uh, the picture while back home. I seen him with the homeboy KT. Shout out KT in the picture, and um, and um, some Academy Award winning director or producer chick or something, and they collaborated to do the SMM Pistol Pete song. You feel what I'm saying? So, and how he's gonna format it? Or whatever, like I have no idea. I don't know 50 Cent. Shout out 50 Cent, man. I'm thankful, you know, just shed some light on my homie. I hope it benefits him in some kind of way. That, that's all right. I can say. You know, I Nobody hope it benefits him. Nobody reached out to you or nothing like that? No. As far as getting some um, detail or, you no, know, I mean, some, some commentary. I mean, no. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know how Mom Dukes feels about it. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, from what I was told last you know about somebody real close and she don't want nothing done on him. you know what i mean so i don't know you know what i mean like and if that was the case if she was to say something like that then that i would have to you know fall back out of respect you feel what i'm saying because i'm the type of nigga man where like i don't care if my nigga got a hundred likes man i'm gonna respect him like he could spin that block right now you feel what i'm saying yo and i think to be any way other than that to be be phony like you know you feel what i'm saying like if, if if I knew the nigga mom was against it, you know what I'm saying, and he was here, like, you feel what I'm saying, I wouldn't do it. So, you feel what I'm saying, like, you know I mean, like, I ain't thirsty or nothing like that, but, you know, I don't know. Just, when I came home, man, it just in New York, it's just, it's a police state to me, bro. It, it, I, I feel like I'm still in prison, man. And you don't know, know when I came here, I was sweating, man. I get uncomfortable being in New York, man. <laughs> I don't know, I'm, I'm used to my space. I'm right. used to being, having my wide open space, doing what I want to do. Don't got to look over my shoulder, this is my next nigga walking up on me, the police, man. I don't like that vibe, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So, man, I, I'd rather be out there where I can see, man. My, my yard is my yard. You know what I'm saying? You come in, I'm, you know you know what's going to happen. Like, you know, I, I don't got to deal with too much. You know, I don't like a lot of stuff too close to me. Right. You know what I mean? How much time have you given the system out of your life? In total, you know, probably about 13, 14 years, but at one time, 11 years. You know, I did 11 years from 2002 to 2013, you know. And, uh, I did that that time, state time for the state of Connecticut, you know. And, um, but I started that bid in Los Angeles and got extradited back because I went on a run to Los Angeles. And um, I was dealing with some people out in Los Angeles at the time, you know, so. They didn't know I was on the run, though, let's make that clear. They didn't know they was already a fugitive. You know, they just thought they was helping me with my music career. That's all that was. Oh, you know? so you were into the music? Also. I was at the time real heavy, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I call myself retired now, you know what I mean? But um, at the time of my arrest, I had an indie label. Everybody in the hood was fucking with me, you know. Hope no, I still got game. And Hope put that Blazing Billy remix out last So He'll tell you I body that. Hocus Po Fifth talked about he he almost had a good shot at making it into the music industry, but unfortunately something happened where he ended up going to prison for four years, waiting and fighting that case. He said that Fifty Cent was about to hire him, was about to sign him until some crazy stuff happened. You know, that's unfortunate because, you know, once Hocus Four Fifth get in the building, you in the building, all his people that's around him, he's coming to pick y'all brothers up. What are some of the things that happened to you that led you into the penitentiary? I mean, 
it's funny how you talked about that situation with Hope, like, where he's on the brink and then that happens. You know, that was the same situation with me. Like I said, I was on the brink and then that happened. My homeboy, Lloyd Tariq, had just went platinum, you know what I'm saying? I seen him do that. So that inspired me to put my own shit up. I pressed my own shit up. I was in the projects. I was on every corner. I was selling it. I was everywhere. I was pulling up clubs everywhere. Buy that, like, and it was moving. Like when I was, that's kind of like how I caught my, my case, see, cause where I was trapping at, you know what I mean? I was telling you, you gotta buy a CD. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Every time they come cops, so you gotta buy a CD. And, um, and that's kind of actually how they ended up turning me in because it said all songs written by my government name on, on the back of the CD, you know? But, um. At that time, I was dealing with Ice-T. I was running around with Ice-T, man, and um, he used to be dropping jewels on me, bringing me to shows of his. He recorded on my album. He liked one of my songs, so he jumped on the remix and did another song with me. Then um, when I was out in L.A., the people I was dealing with in L.A., my, the, the big bro T. Rogers, shout out to T. Rogers, man. I love you, T. T. Rogers took me up into Suge's office, you know, because the, the bro Tone Stone came home and Suge had put him in, in position. So, you know, um, I had uh, the, the, you know, the, the privilege of being taken into that situation, but it was, it was when I went to uh, go see Suge, it was right around the time where his right hand man Buntry had got killed. So they, they was taking care of that, I guess, or whatever, you know? And um, before that could be resolved, I got locked up. I got locked up April 24th, 2002, like the day left I died, you know what I mean? So all that shit happened like right at the same time, you know? What was it like, what was T-Rogers like? I, I didn't just meet him personally, man. Like I said, man, he um he took me in, man. You know, when I was out there in LA, he took me in. I lived in his home, man. I slept on his couch, bro. You feel what I mean? And I'm like, he, if it wasn't for him, I would not have been able to survive out there in the streets, evidently. You know what I mean? Because like, I'm not from out there, you know what I mean? So I pretty much had his stamp on me in order for me to be able to go out the door and run around, like, you know what I mean? So. That's, that's definitely someone I consider family, man, mm -hmm. a big bro. I got a lot of love for him. Um, I kind of disappointed him by going to prison. You know what I mean? That, that put a strain on a lot of those relationships that I, I'm speaking of, like me going to prison. Because they wanted to fuck with me. You know what I mean? Like, I was, I was doing something with the music and I went to prison. So, you know, people who be in those type of positions like Ice-T, man, he got too much to lose to be messing with niggas who's still going back and forth to prison. So, you know, I, I haven't heard from him since I've been home. You know what I mean? And, I mean, it would be nice to hear from him again, you know what I mean? But yeah, situations like that. Have you met Africa Bambada? I know you had You had to meet Africa Bambada. If you know Ice-T and all of them. I've never met. I have never met Africa Bambada in my life. The first time I met Ice-T was right down here on 125th Street again by the train station, by the, uh, the Metro North. It was a studio there called Harmelodia. You know, this was back in 2000 or 2001. Something like that when I was working on my album, the indie album that I put out. And um, my, my partner, Jeff Green, one of the guys that had the label with me, he had a white girl named Sarah Lovely who knew Ice-T. And she was like, she could get him to the studio. And uh, however that matriculated between them, Jeff and Sarah, I met him in the studio. You know what I mean? It was him and Trigger the Gambler came together. That's when they was doing the SMG thing, you know, and you know he invited me to be part of the little SMG click back then, you know? And, yeah, that's what was going on back then. When you heard the story, and I know a lot of people heard it, when you heard the story about Africa Bambata and what he was doing, you've heard of Africa Bambata before. So when you heard the story about Africa Bambata molesting little kids and molesting boys, what went through your mind, man? When I heard about Africa Bambata molesting little boys, I was not surprised. I didn't know him personally, but being from the street, you know, I knew people who had interacted with that Zulu circle before. And I had a, a homeboy of mine named X-Ray from Highbridge. Shout out my man X-Ray, he said he used to be like a dancer, like a break dancer or back, you know, one of those scuba scrap lover type, one type, some type of dancing shit. And he went on tour with these dudes. He was in Europe, Africa, all this with these dudes. Huh? And he said he just seen too much weird shit on tour and it made him leave and come home. You know, he told me this a while back. This was in the 90s, he told, early 90s he told me that. You know, so I've been heard about him, but like, it didn't involve me, you know what I'm saying? Like, that didn't have nothing to do with, with, with my paper route. You know what I mean? I didn't have, I wasn't from Bronx River, you know. I messed with my man Shaft and Reggie Simmons, you know, the Simmons family, people out of Bronx River, man, but I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't know. 
I ain't no African man, man. I ain't nothing to do with that. That wasn't my circle, like, you know, we probably, we probably never would have gravitated towards each other, man. You know, my thighs ain't, and you know, I, I played football with my thighs, man. I don't, I don't, I don't know if anybody else to do with their thighs, you know? Yeah. What would you like to leave behind? What would you like to, your legacy to be? I mean, that's like real simple. That's real simple. It's like the whole re redefinition of what a gangster is, man. Truthfully. You know what I mean? Redefining that shit. You know, it's like, first and foremost, it's about being a man. Understanding manhood. I had to do that first. I had to understand what manhood was. And once I became a man, then it's like, you you know, it's your obligation to reach back and, and pull the next one into manhood. Because like a fraternity, you, you got to be brought in. You don't just become a man because you have your 21st birthday. You know what I mean? Somebody got to be willing to tell you like, nah, you can't do this. You have to always do that. You can never do this. Like, you know what I mean? Like somebody has to sometimes take you by the hand and tell you those things because you don't always know. Everything is not innate. 